This week on Life Class. We all were given a briefcase this morning with 24 golden hours in it. Time. There is no variation with it. The young are given 24 hours. The old are given 24 hours. The every race is given 24 hours. Some people sit down dreaming their lives away. Some people make impact with the time of their life. Inspiration, finance, entrepreneurship. Life class with Matthew Ashima Lowo. In 2005, about 12 years ago, I wrote this book, Be the Best, and it quickly sold out. But because many other books kept coming out, we never got to reprint it. I sat down one time and felt if a man wanted to be the best that he could be in life, what are the principles he should apply to his life? And I wrote nine things. And this morning we want to start by taking one of them at a time and looking at those nine things. So be the best, the nine powerful keys to a successful life, how to rise beyond mediocrity. It's very easy to settle for mediocrity in the world in which we live today. But today we want to look at the first of all the nine things that can really help you to rise above mediocrity. And in this morning's teaching, I'll be sharing with you on 15 secrets of uh, managing your time, 15 secrets of time management, 15 secrets of time management. Ephesians chapter five, verses 15 to 17. Ephesians chapter five, verses 15 to 17. See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is. Secrets to the management of your time is a necessity. If you're going to make progress with your life and the success with your life. You see, time is so major if you're going to succeed. Time is so key. And when you have an understanding of how to manage your time, then you cannot make a mistake with your destiny. Somebody had said, do not say you don't have time. You have exactly the same number of hours per day that were given to people like Helen Keller, Louis Pasteur, who discovered the penicillin, Michelangelo, who drew the picture we know of, the one we know of Jesus today. You know, some people, if you tell them, that may not be the face you see in heaven, they will argue with you. They don't realize it was just Michelangelo who drew an impression of what he thought the face of Jesus would be. I mean, the same hour of time is what Mother Teresa had or Leonardo da Vinci, the man who even 700 years ago began to design helicopters and aeroplanes before they existed. Or Thomas Edison, the man who conducted electricity, and Albert Einstein, the man who discovered the principles of relativity that made today's physics to give birth to astronomy, that gave birth to Plato, us being able to travel beyond our planet and do several things we do today. All of them had the same number of hours you and I have. Nobody is given more hours than the other. So number one, time is limited. And because time is limited, you got to know how to manage it. Out of the 15 principles, the first one is the fact that time is limited. Tell your neighbor, time is limited. limited. Say like you mean it, time is limited. And because it is limited, means it's a limited commodity. Why is gold expensive? Because it's not found everywhere. It is limited. Why is diamond so expensive? A pastor in, uh, I think it is Liberia, who just found the, the biggest Oh, Sierra Leone. Every Sierra Leonean is protesting right now. All right. (laughs) 
he found the biggest uh, gold um, diamond rock and he wants to sell for something like 15 million dollars and they are offering him a smaller amount why is one rock no bigger than a pebble you would pick and throw worth 15 million dollars if that is the amount he will eventually say they are asking him to take three to five million dollars he's saying no for one tiny rock why because it is limited so you got to use it wisely you got to use your time wisely why because you can never get it back 7 a.m this morning is gone forever 9 a.m. this morning will be coming, and once it comes and goes, it is gone forever. There are 1,440 minutes in every day. And the number of minutes given me is the one given to you. So you've got to keep focus on your MIT. Your MIT is your most important task. You've got to keep focus on it, or else you will waste your time on the things that are not important. Time is money. Don't let nobody come and stay in your house and say they want to kill time. Your home should not be a place of killing time. An equal commodity given to all men is what we call time. We all were given a briefcase this morning with 24 golden hours in it. Time. There is no variation with it. The young are given 24 hours. The old are given 24 hours. The every race is given 24 hours. Some people sit down dreaming their lives away. Some people make impact with the time of their life. It cannot be frozen. You can't freeze time. Neither can you carry it forward. No carry forward. Time has to either be used or lose or you lose it and lost time is gone forever you know lost time is gone forever it will never come back time not spent expires in your hands and it just fritters away and listen when we talk of the future the future does not arrive boom in one go it arrives in seconds in seconds and if you don't prepare for that second, that second is gone, and another second is come, and another second goes, that time has no geographical boundaries. As long as you live on this planet, they don't have 22 hours in Africa, 17 in Middle East, 29 in Europe, 23 in America. We all have 24 hours. We all have equal opportunity of time. It cannot be recaptured. It is gone. Many have wasted theirs. And the tomorrow you talk about arrives in seconds. And guess what? By the time you are 70 years old, you would have spent 25 years sleeping. Yes, because you sleep 7 to 8 hours a day. So, every 8 hours in 3 days makes 1 day. You have slept for a whole day within three days. So in 70 years, you spent 25 years of your life sleeping. You spent 18 years in school. And you spent five years eating. If it's not fast food, of course. <laughs> when you add just those three together, 25 plus 18 plus 5 equals to something like 48 years. We have not talked about productivity. So somebody say limited. limited. Oh, I want you to say it again. Time is, time is limited. Help me to tell your neighbor that time is limited. You know, we think we have time. We'll always tell ourselves, I have time. I have time. I have time. I have time. We haven't even talked about the time of recreation. We haven't talked about the time you hung out with people. We haven't talked about the time you just sat down doing nothing. We haven't talked about the number of hours you spent watching neighbors, enemies, extenders. Time. Number two, you got to learn how to schedule your finishing. You got to learn how to schedule your finishing. Somebody say schedule finishing. Say it louder, schedule finishing. The Bible says in Matthew 24, verse 13, but he who endures to the end, 
shall be saved. So there has to be a scheduling of your finishing, of your dream, of your life, of the things you want to do, the things you want to achieve. You cannot be the best at everything. So you got to learn how to schedule, schedule your finishing. Stay, and, and when you want to schedule your finishing, listen to me. You've got to learn to stay in your 20% best. What do we mean by that? You, you are not good at everything. Look at me. Tell you, touch yourself and say, I'm not good at everything. But I'm good at something. Don't stay in what is not your best. Stay in your 20% best. It is important to know the principle of quantity and quality. Quantity of time with some people, but quality of your time in the things in which you are strong. You've got to learn how to delineate the time for the project to be completed. You can't just have it behind your mind that one day this project will be completed. Or you just keep dreaming. You've got to schedule the finishing. He who endures to the end will be saved. The beginner is not a worker. The beginner is not a worker. And you will be, you will be rewarded according to the quality of your time, not the quantity. Jesus told the parable of a man who hired servants. One he hired by 9 a.m., he said, your money will be one dinar. He signed the contract. He had another one, 12 noon. He said, your money will be one dinar. He signed the contract. Another one was hired by 3 p.m. And he said, your money will be one dinar. He signed the contract. In Hebrew culture, in the days of Jesus, daytime finished by 6, nighttime starts that time. When it was six and they were being paid, the man who was hired by 9 a.m. protested. I worked longer. It's not how long. It's the quality of time. He said, we hired you for nine. And we paid you what we said we'll pay you, didn't we? This one, we knew that from 3 p.m. to 6 p.m., what he will achieve. Do you know there are people like that? In the brevity of time, the scheduled finishing, makes greater impact than you can imagine. Is someone hearing me? Stay tuned for more. Whatever can be delegated should be delegated. Amen. Don't do everything. There are things that do not add value to your life. There are things that do not add value to your achievement. If you want to really be the best in life, you got to hand that over to someone else. Hand that over to the person who can help you do it. Leadership, inspiration, finance, entrepreneurship, life class with Matthew Ashima Lowo. Number three, in order for you to really make impact with your life, you've got to learn how to delegate. You shouldn't do everything. You can't do everything. Paul said to Timothy, a young pastor, and the things that you have heard from me and many witnesses, commit these to faithful men who will be able to teach others also. Whatever can be delegated should be delegated. Amen? Don't do everything. There are things that do not add value to your life. There are things that do not add value to your achievement. If you want to really be the best in life, you got to hand that over to someone else. Hand that over to the person who can help you do it. Do you know that if you had to be the one that carried all the dustbin from your house to where they throw it, I don't know where, 
the refuse disposal unit carries it. If you have to be the one to go here to fix this one, fix that one, the quality of your life will be reduced. But you'll find that life will pay you according to your value. In fact, you are already paying people according to their value. That's why the man who picks your refuse, you don't pay him what you pay your lawyer. What you pay your lawyer is different. What you pay your accountant is different because of the value of their time. But also, in order for you to place value on yourself, you've got to learn to delegate away some things so that you can make life faster. You can achieve some things faster. You can be the best that God wants you to be. Ask someone else to do it. Ask someone else to, to be able to carry that out. I'll be like, I would like to once in a while mow the grass. But I tell you, I don't want to mow the grass because it's not my anointing. One. Number two, it may take two, three hours to cut the grass, and I may not cut it nicely like a gardener will do. I can't use grass to shape letter U, letter K, like I see them do. I don't have the grace. It's not my ability. But I can do something with two, three hours. I've been in an airport somewhere in Africa, which I shall not mention, and the flight was delayed for almost four hours. But before the plane landed, I had completed a book. The book on visitation, one of those books that was recently published. As they were delaying, I just brought out my, my dictaphone. I had all the notes in my iPad, so I began to dictate the book. In fact, as they began to announce the plane will land in five minutes, I was hoping it would delay another 10 minutes because I'm about to read the conclusion of the book. I can achieve writing a book in one hour because that's my own area of strength. The man who does the cutting of the grass, he finds fulfillment in it. You know what I'm saying? He knows what he's doing. In fact, he knows the different grasses. I don't know. It was when I began to play golf that I got to know that grasses have different names. I thought all grass is grass. You know, I once went... Uh, I was saying, oh, we might want to have a golf course in the estate we are building. And the pro said, yeah, you will need the grass called Kikuyu. I said, that's from Kenya. He said, yes, that's the only place they get that particular grass for it to be the green of the... F I said, I don't know. I just thought you go, go get grass somewhere. Just put it there and mow in. He said, no, it wouldn't work. You've got to get Kikuyu. Oh, really? Thank you very much. <laughs> Everyone have his own specialization. You've got to know where you are called to be. You are called to be somebody. You will be. Amen. Somebody say better amen. amen. Put value on your hours. Do not allow the unimportant details to drag you down. So many people have been dragged down by unimportant details. In the 1980s or early 90s, a plane crashed into the Florida Everglades when they discovered the black box, as they call it, which records every conversation in the cockpit, it turned out that as the pilot and his co-pilot were about to engage the landing gear, they noticed one small button that, would, that turned on as a light. And they kept focusing on that button and talking and joking on the button, but did not realize the plane was going down with its head down. And they focused on a small part of the whole instrument in that cockpit until by the time they realized it was too late. They gave all their attention on a tiny light that is inconsequential to the landing of the plane. That's what some of us do. We can spend hours to go quarrel with somebody. We can spend two hours to argue on telephone about something that has no eternal value, no financial value, no relational value, does not bless anyone, but we can be on the phone talking about things we don't even have full information on. Secrets to managing your time. How many really want to be the best in life? Let me see your hand. Somebody say, I will be the best. Number four, do everything you do with a plan. Somebody say, do it with a plan. Say it again, do it with a plan. You got to have a plan. If you don't have a plan, you cannot arrive anywhere. 
Bible says Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 2. Then the Lord answered me and said, write the vision. Make it plain that he who reads it may run with it. In other words, have a plan for your life. Have a plan for that business. Have a plan for what you want to do. Have a plan for where you are going. Have a clear, in fact, when I say plan, maybe we should say plans. If you, you can have a major vision and you have different plans. If, for example, you want to sell this, this, this face towel, you should have an advertising plan. You should have a marketing plan. You should have a, you should have a storage plan. You should have a profit margin plan. You should have a what happens, you should have a supply chain plan so that they supply us. We also know how to supply the others. We know who produces, who provides this. You have various plans. If you have no plan, you waste your time on the most unimportant and then you find yourself caught in the web of not making progress and then you blame the devil. Christians love to blame Satan. Christians love to blame the devil when they don't play their part. So get minimal with meetings. If you have to carry out meetings, don't spend all of your time on just the meeting. And when we say have a plan, have a plan for important things. Important things. Important things. Make it precise. You plan to fail if you fail to plan. You plan to fail if you fail to plan. Meditate, think, process the idea. This book of the Lord shall not depart from thy mouth. But thou shalt meditate therein. Thou shalt meditate, 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 day and night. 